Well, I want to jump right into it today on this podcast for a story of ministries. And if you're new, welcome. We try to write uh, very often, two or three times a week, podcast as often as possible. And we're doing our Tuesday morning men's study from Ezekiel. I have a great group of men here. We record that live, unedited, post it on Facebook. We're about to get it up on the Story website. And then we have our women's study from Isaiah on Fridays at 7 o'clock. So we'd love to have you come to 801 South Van Buren to be a part of our studies or to watch online. But today, we're going to ask and answer a question. Is this the end of the world? <laughs> what do I mean by that? And why am I smiling? Well, it's just amazing how followers of Yeshua, uh, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, have a tendency to always see the end of the world when bad things begin to happen around the world. For example, I got a call this morning that the federal government has uh, purchased $200 million worth of medicine uh, to treat people who are suffering from radiation due to a nuclear fallout. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of medicine. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not. I have a tendency to believe it is. I know the 101st Airborne uh, is located on the northern border of Ukraine. First time 101st Airborne has been deployed since World War II. You look at the pandemics that have raged across the world over the last few years, and now I heard Fauci on television say that we've got two really big new pandemics that could be coming this winter. you got kids suffering from RSV who are in the hospital. And probably worst of all, we are now facing famine in industrialized countries. Oh, how depressing. Think with me. I just mentioned the four horsemen of the unveiling. By the way, that's the word apocalypse. That's what Apocalypse means. It means unveiling. Who are the four horsemen? Famine, pestilence, or we would call it pandemic or plague, war, and death. You say, uh, I don't understand. When you read the Hebrew scriptures, when you read the Greek scriptures, that means the Old Testament and the New Testament, you find that when Yahweh, when the Lord brings judgment on nations, it is a sword in his hand. It is called the sword of the Lord. We read about it in Ezekiel chapter 21. We read about it in Jeremiah. We read about it in Daniel. We read about the sword of the Lord and the hand of the Lord throughout Scripture. When he has determined to judge nations for sin and rebellion against him. Now, here's what this means. God uses wicked leaders of other nations to punish nations through war, pestilence, pandemic, and famine, not because he's sadomasochistic, not because he likes punishing people, but when nations turn against him into sexual immorality or into idolatry, then God will raise up a pagan leader and he will bring the sword. His sword, which means a leader who's in his hand doing his bidding to humble proud nations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. The Lord does this. The Lord has done this throughout history. He has used war, famine, pestilence, and death to humble proud people and proud nations. And here's the thing. America, for the first time in a long time, is facing famine, pestilence, potential war, and death. If a nuclear bomb goes off in the United States, there can be a lot of people who die. Maybe that's why the federal government is buying radiation medicine. 
If there's two new pandemics that are worse than the 2020 uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there's more than a million people who may die. Poverty, war, famine. Guys, we could be facing a bad time in America. Listen to me, it's not out of control. There is no reason to be afraid. When you understand the scriptures and history, you recognize something that is absolutely stunning. Are you ready for this? God, throughout history, has always punished nations with the four horsemen of the unveiling of his wrath, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It happens over and over and over and over and over again. 1095 in Egypt, 722 Israel, 609 Assyria, 586 Judah, 539 Babylon, 334 BC Persia, 146 BC Greece, 8070 Israel again, 476 AD Rome, 711 AD Iberia, that's Spain, 1806 the Holy Roman Empire, 1922 the Ottoman Empire, 1945 the German Reich and the Japanese Empire. Now here we are in 2022. Could it be the United States? Yeah, it could. This morning we studied Ezekiel 2022, or excuse me, Ezekiel 22 in the year 2022. And Yahweh lists the sins of the rulers and the people of Israel, Judah. And those sins, it's like reading Twitter. It's like reading the front page of the newspaper. People are proud about their sexual immorality Ezekiel says, of the people of Judah, his hometown of Jerusalem. People are proud that they're having sex with their mother, brothers having sex with their sisters. You can read it for yourself in Ezekiel 22. You have fathers having uh, sexual immorality, uh, taking advantage of their daughter-in-laws. Does it really say that? Yes. It's, 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 it's like when a nation is consumed with sexual immorality and takes pride in their rebellion against the Lord and his design for a man and a wife to enjoy sex within the sacred context of marriage for the purpose of procreation so that families will grow up in the economy of God under his reign, his kingdom, the king's dominion. When people rebel against that concept, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Are unveiled. Now, see, in our modern day, scientists, in fact, I just read a book of a, of a scientist that always speaks at the World Economic Forum. And he says, today, mankind has no need of God because we have solved the problem of famine, war, pestilence, and one day even death. Uh-huh. Duval Noah is his name. I've written about him before. Can you believe the pride of a person who says, hey, no more war, famine, pestilence, and death. Mm -hmm. Not understanding, by the way, he's an atheist. Not understanding that God uses these things to purge people of their sins. But here's the good news. Are you ready for this? And I'll be done. Are you a believer in Yeshua? Have you trusted him as your Savior? All the wrath of your Creator was poured out on the Son whom He loved, Yeshua. Wow, and you've been purged of the consequences of your sins because of Christ's obedience in this life. He became flesh and dwelt among us, and He lived the way we should have lived. And He died the death we deserved to die. And because the wrath of God was poured out on Yeshua, when you come to faith in him, you're marked with the towel. You're marked with the cross. You are righteous. Now, it doesn't mean you'll escape potential atomic warfare, death, famine, um, pestilence. doesn't mean the righteous won't get COVID or whatever new plague comes along or won't die in war or won't die in famine. No, 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 no. What it means is, when that judgment comes, when the four horsemen are released, those marked with the towel, the cross, those who have come to faith in Yeshua are saved from the second death, 
You see, if all you're living for is this life, and all you think about is your allegiance to this world and the system of governance that is all about rejecting God, that's all you're going to get. And when you die, you'll stand before your Creator and you will be judged for your life and you will die a second time. It's called the second death. It's eternal death. There's no recovery from it. And those who trust Yeshua, they're like the Jews who in 586 left Jerusalem, went to Babylon, and you read the prophets and they say, you have been purged of your sin. Jesus is the fulfillment of all the captivity do God's people for their sins. He bore the full horseman on the cross so that eternally every need you ever have will be met. You will never die again. You will never get sick in eternity. Why? The full horsemen have been defeated. No more famine. No more sorrow. No more death. No more pestilence, no more cancer, no more plagues, no more man-made laboratory pandemics. No, no. The Creator, He's purged the world of sin. And here's the thing, He did it at the cross through His Son. And you either accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Savior given among mankind, or... You live your own way, go your own way, do your own thing, and the four horsemen will one day come. It will one day come. Because God is in the habit, remember, He's in the habit throughout history, judging nations for their sins. Is judgment coming for America? Maybe. Maybe. Here's the thing, it's the most exciting time to be alive. It's not the end of the world. No, it's a purging of proud people who mock God and flaunt their immorality and idolatry and say, we don't need you. Yahweh in his grace says, listen, I've given you my son. And if you reject him and the burning spirit that I will give you in your heart to purge you of your sins within, follow me in life. If you reject that. I'll unleash the sword, the four horsemen. Now, in Israel's day, the sword was Nebuchadnezzar. In our day, it may be Putin. In Judah's day, the sword brought destruction. In our day, the sword may bring destruction. But trust Yahweh and recognize he has your back. So are we at the end? The end of what? The end of the world? No, a world without end. He always on his throne. His kingdom reigns forever. We may be at the end of the power of the proud people of the United States. That's a good thing. Because when God brings down tall trees, proud people, his purpose is to raise up something new. He will exalt. I hope you understand that it's probably not wise to get caught up in all the talk about the end of the world and realize that history only repeats itself. In 2022, we may be repeating the history of the nations. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Be sure and subscribe to Historia Ministries. Get on the mailing list. Subscribe to YouTube, and we'll see you next time uh, for another podcast. God bless you. Love you. And uh, may we all, may we all learn to love his story so that our stories can revolve around his. God bless you. See you next time.